In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the integral of inverse trigonometric functions using integration by parts. So our example here is the integral of the inverse sine of x. And we're going to do something similar to what we did with the natural log function. We're going to set u equal to sine inverse of x and let dv be equal to dx. Then we're going to take the derivative of u which is 1 over 1 plus x squared dx and the integral of dv which would just be x. So putting it back together now we get the integral of sine inverse of x dx is equal to uv which is x sine inverse of x then minus the integral of v du which is x over 1 plus x squared dx. Now for the second, for the integral there, we can now use u substitution, typical u substitution, using 1 plus x squared as u. And du would be 2x dx. If I divide both sides by 2, get 1 half of du is going to be 2x dx. So I can replace, sorry, x dx. So I can replace x dx with 1 half du and I can replace the denominator with just du, with u. So once again, we have x sine inverse of x minus 1 half integral du over u, and the du over u is going to be, the integral of du over u is natural log of absolute value of x, or u in this case. So we carry the first term down, x sine inverse of x, then we have 1 half natural log of the absolute value of u, which is just 1 plus x squared, and plus c. Now in this case, the absolute value bars are probably not necessary, or not necessary, because x is squared, so its least value can be 0, and so 1 plus x squared has a minimum value of 1. And uh, we could do one further step with that, take out the absolute value bars and use the one-half multiplier to, uh, or the negative one-half multiplier to make that one over natural log of the square root of one plus x squared. But we'll just leave it this way for now. It's fine. All right, I'll rewrite it this way without taking the negative with the one-half. And uh, if I did, that would be plus natural log of 1 over square root of 1 plus x squared. But this is fine, just like that. So any of those uh, forms are sufficient. So that'll do it for this problem and this video. Once again, this is using integration by parts to find integrals of inverse trig functions.